So now we're just going to look at one sample problem to see if we can use these three algebraic equations to solve for some common questions like the acceleration of something or how much time something takes. So let's say we have a car moving along initially with a velocity of negative 30 meters per second. It's moving to the left in the negative direction, um, and that's its initial velocity, which is about 66 miles an hour. And let's say the driver hits the brakes and gradually comes to a stop. So the final velocity in the x direction is zero. It's decreasing speed over time while moving in the negative direction, so it would have a positive acceleration. And let's say they stopped, the car was displaced while slowing down 100 meters while moving in the negative direction. So the displacement or the change in position of the object was negative 100 meters. And we've got these three equations and we're just gonna use them to see if we can figure out what is the acceleration of the car, that positive acceleration in the x direction. How much was it changing its velocity each and every second? And how much time did it actually take to slow down to come to a stop? So the first thing you're gonna do if you're given these, this information or this diagram is just write down our given information. Um, in these equations, there's five different variables. There's the initial velocity, the final velocity, the displacement, which is kind of you know final position minus initial position. So I'm kind of rolling these two together into one variable, the acceleration in the X direction or the time. And so let's write down any of this information that we know and any of the variables we don't know, let's just put a question mark. The last two here, those will be our question marks because that's what we're trying to figure out. So the initial velocity, that was negative 30 meters per second. The final velocity, well, it came to rest. The final velocity was zero. And the displacement or the change in position was negative 100 meters. So we would just write this for the given information. And anything we don't know yet in the beginning, let's just write question marks for right here. So let's go ahead and find the acceleration first. So if we want to use these equations or one of these equations to find the acceleration, that means we need to find one equation that has an A in it, which there's an A in the first one, the second one, and the third one. But we need to know everything else in that equation except for the acceleration term. Like if we look up at this first equation, we don't know A, so that's fine. We do know the final velocity, that's zero. We do know the initial velocity, that's negative 30 meters per second, but we don't know time. So if we plug in our values in this equation, we'd actually have two unknowns. You can't solve for two unknowns if you just have one equation. You need two equations with the same two unknowns. Well, what about this one down here? We know the displacement, so we could figure out the final position minus the initial position. Uh, we know the initial velocity, but again, we don't know time. We don't know acceleration. That's gonna leave two unknowns in this equation. This third one though, we don't need to know time. Remember, this equation works independent of the time. We know the final velocity, the initial velocity, and we know the displacement, x minus x sub zero. That's just negative 100 meters. So this equation, the only unknown is acceleration. So let's just use that one. So when we're doing this, I want you just to write out the equation in its general form before you plug values in. Next, let's plug in the values that we have. So the final velocity is zero meters per second, and that's all squared. The initial velocity is negative 30 meters per second, and that's squared in the equation, plus two times our unknown acceleration, let's just leave that as an A, all multiplied by our displacements, which is negative 100 meters. So now all we really need to do to solve for A is do a little bit of simplification and do some algebra to solve for A. So zero meters per second squared is zero meters squared over second squared. Whenever you square something, you have to square everything inside of these parentheses, which means we're squaring the zero, which is that, and we're squaring the meters divided by seconds. So it's meters squared over second squared. Negative 30 squared is 900. Meters over second squared is meters squared over second squared. And I'm gonna combine the two times negative 100, just so we've got negative 200 times A. And so let's first subtract 900 from each side. So it's going to end up moving it to the left side. So we'd get negative 900 meters squared over second squared is equal to negative 200 meters times the acceleration. To get A by itself to solve for acceleration, we have to undo this times negative 200 meters. So we're going to divide each side by negative 200 meters. Remember in algebra, like 
you whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. So we have to divide the right-hand side by negative 200 meters, so it cancels out there. But if we did that to the right side, we have to do that to the left side of the equation. So we have to divide the left side by negative 200 meters. So we get A is equal to negative 900 meters squared over second squared divided by negative 200 meters. So negative 900 divided by negative 200 is positive 4.5. And we have to do the same thing with the units. We have to take these units, meters squared over second squared, divided by meters. And if we look at that complex fraction, the meter up there in the numerator, one of them will be canceled by the one down here in the denominator. So the final units are just meters over second squared, or meters per second for each and every second, which is the unit for an acceleration. Right? If we did a little bit of algebra wrong, um, these units wouldn't work out. And if it's not what we expect it to be, that's kind of an indication maybe something went wrong getting to the final answer. So the car, while it's slowing down, changes its velocity by about four and a half meters per second each and every second that it's slowing down. And we're assuming that it's a uniform acceleration or a constant acceleration. So the only thing we have to do now is solve for the time. Well, we now know the acceleration is four and a half meters per second each and every second, so we could add that to our givens, and the only thing we don't know is time. So we just need to find an equation now that has a t in it, so we can solve for time, and we have to know everything else in it. Well, out of all the variables, we now know everything except for time, so technically we could use, well, not any equation, only an equation that has time in it. Remember, this third one doesn't have a t, so that's not going to work out. So we have to use the first one or the second one. A little hint, notice there's just t in this first equation, if you're solving for time. In the second equation, there's a t and a t squared. So you're going to have to use a quadratic to solve this equation. I don't like using quadratics if I don't have to. So let's go ahead and just use that first equation. So like I said before, we're going to write that in its general form first. The final velocity is equal to the initial velocity or plus acceleration multiplied by time. And we know everything except for t. So let's just substitute in the values we know, do a little bit of algebra, and solve for time. So our final velocity is 0 meters per second. Our initial velocity is negative 30 meters per second. Plus acceleration, which we found over here, is 4.5 meters per second for each second. That's got to be multiplied by time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 30 meters per second to each side of this equation, which is going to get rid of it on the right side and add it to the left side. So we get 30 meters per second is equal to 4.5 meters per second each second, all multiplied by time. I want to get time by itself, so I'm going to divide the right side by 4.5 meters per second each second, which means I need to do the same thing to the left side. So to solve for time, we just take 30 divided by 4.5, which is 6.7. But let's just look at what the units are. We have meters per second, all divided by meters per second, divided by seconds. Now let's bring this over here. This is a complex fraction just to make sense of this. So meters per second on the top, that's the same as meters per second divided by one. That's still the same thing. And on the bottom, we're dividing by meters divided by seconds divided by seconds, right? So when you have a complex fraction, the fraction on the top divided by the fraction on the bottom, you can take the fraction on the top, which is this, meters divided by seconds over 1, and multiply that by the reciprocal of the fraction on the bottom. So it's multiplying it by seconds over meters over seconds, right? That's the reciprocal of meters over seconds divided by seconds. And when we do this, we take the top fraction divided by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction, Notice on the top of the first one, we have meters over seconds. And on the bottom over here, we have meters over seconds. And so these two things cancel. And notice the only thing we have left over is seconds in the numerator. And there's one in the denominator. And seconds over one, that's the same thing as just seconds. So all of that, fortunately, turns out to be a unit of time, which you should have expected because we were solving for time. So it takes the car about 6.7 seconds to slow down from its initial velocity of about negative 66 miles an hour, negative 30 meters per second, to rest at zero meters per second. 